Anybody want some extra avocado? Don't you mean extra? Extra avocado. You want some pepper? No pepper. I was at university in Aberdeen, Scotland and uh, filled out like a little card, would you be interested in summer work in America? And then forgot about it, right? And about a month later, 10.45 at night, I had a phone call from some guy talking about um, summer work in America. I, can't even, I didn't even remember, like he said the name of the company and I didn't even know, that. Like, I didn't remember what he was on about. I said, all right, well, I'll meet you the next day. And that was it. So he said, uh, well, let's meet up. And I was like, well, how, how will I know it's you? Because we wanted to meet in the student refectory. Um, he said, well, I'll be the guy in the suit. It's like, I won't have any red carnations or anything, but I'll be the guy in the suit. I said, okay. He said, well, how will I recognize you? He said, well, like, what color hair you got? I was like, well, blonde. He's like, you tall. I was like, about 6'1". He's like, he's like, okay. And apparently he got off the phone and said to his friend, I'm meeting a six foot blonde tomorrow. We better, we better look sharp. <laughs> so that was it. But we were friends for a long time before. Anthony Nelson. That's the long story short. I'm from Scotland. I've been in Nashville about 15 years and in and out of the States a few years prior to that. So my accent was a lot thicker. So Scottish people will say I sound really American and then American people say I sound really Scottish. So you can't really win. Run us through your dogs. They're all rescues and the oldest one is Winston. He's from Metro Animal Control. He's probably 10 and then Finn, he was from Rutherford County via a friend who rescues from like uh, uh, met, you know, animal control facilities. And then Little Bit is from Alabama, a rescue there. And the newest one, Happy, is from Memphis, animal rescue. Finn is an Airedale mix and the rest are Shih Tzus. So if you're patient enough and you, if you're looking for a particular breed, because I don't get dogs from breeders because there's so many that are in rescues, um, you, can, you can find just about any breed. My dogs are with me all the time, um, especially Finn. So if I would see one, especially if I'm up in my room, um, we've got skylights, so I can see if, you know, if they fly past my room, I'd be like hawks and I'd make a run for it. And of course he comes with me and then they all come. So then they got used to me saying hawk and running for it and then going down and try to scare off the hawks. And now, now they just do it by themselves. So either Finn or Little Bit, the little brown shih tzu, will see them first and off they'll go, bark, 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 and then they kind of tag team scaring it off. And then Little Bit will stay on security alert for a while afterwards. It's so funny because he's like this, you know, his face is this big and he's intently like just watching around for the hawk. How did you end up getting chickens? Well, I'd wanted them for a few years, but um, there was always, you know, too many projects going on. But then, uh, for my 40th birthday, it was during quarantine and what else can you do? So I knew if I was going to get chickens, this was one year that Ed couldn't say no. So <laughs> I asked for chickens for my birthday and he built me the coop. We went to a farm in Shelbyville and it was right at the start of COVID. So we had to like meet at a garage and mask up and I had some questionable hair extensions in. There were a COVID purchase <laughs> and we got some, we got four silkies and we got the Easter Egger, Easter, and the Polish who is Boomer, because she was the craziest one at the time. She boom boomed everywhere. And Stretch, who I can't remember what kind she is right now. All strop, I can't remember. So I think we had about eight to start with. And then uh, we had them for a while and we raised them in the garage and initially in Lila's room in a tub. Like they were just right in there in a tub and the dogs were just like this into the plastic tub just looking at them like this which we let them do because then they got over over their initial interest <laughs> didn't you a little bit especially him uh they got over their initial interest now that it's like they don't care about the chickens it's nothing of great interest so it's like kids with the christmas tree decorations like you let them hold them for a while and then they don't care anymore Um, I don't know if we'd have gotten right to it because my husband would never have had time to build me a coop and I didn't want to pay $4,000 for a very small coop that looked really pretty, you know. Um, so he was able to have the time to do it for me and I had the birthday element and he had the time. 
and we had a friend staying with us who helped for a bit. So I think all the things kind of combined into me being able to get them. But we've really enjoyed it, it's been fun. We have two kids, Lila is 12 and Rafe is nine especially you know in the start of the pandemic there was nothing what were the kids going to do they had nothing to do there was all this stress going on and they could just like sit with a little chicky you know and it it was fun to see the personalities of the little chicks coming out and who bonded with which kid and um you know they would be doing their online schoolwork with the chicken on their shoulder or you know their show and tell was a chicken rafe will pick up whichever chicken, it's usually baby, and hold her like uncomfortably for her probably under the wings and just one wheel around with baby chicken <laughs> fighting, fighting wars and adventures and who knows what else. So we had a rooster for a while and he was, we've had a couple of roosters. One got, was a little silky who's so sweet. Um, and he, he and another silky were taken off, who knows by whom. And he was named, his name was Custard, and he was actually super sweet. Um, and he was really um, attached to us because he was attacked by the other two roosters we had. So we had to like nurse him back to health in the kit. He stayed in the kitchen for a few days in like a dog carrier. It was so gross because he was attacked, and you know, like his face was all pecked up, and it's, it's raw chicken. It smells like raw chicken. It's disgusting. <laughs> so he was really attached to us. He was so sweet. So he went off to who knows where. Um, so we got another chicken who was actually needing rehomed. So we got him and he was a really good guard chicken. Like the girls couldn't go six feet from him. He would be herding them together. But he was a jerk. So <laughs> he would attack us all. What happened to him? He, uh, he found a new home with our landscapers. Don't know how he's doing today. <laughs> what did she tell you, the landscapers? Well, well, I, you know, I just stayed out of that. Ed organized that. I was away at the time. So he was like, I think I found a new home for your rooster. So he had to go. He was so not Ed fun. organized a hit for you, huh? He, he got the hit, man. Once you've ordered it, you don't talk about it anymore. No. So um, he had to go. Yeah, because he was like stealing the joy of our chickens. Like we couldn't be around them because he would chase us hardcore. Like we'd run all the way down the hill. He was fast and mean. The rooster left and I was out of town so I told Ed to keep the eggs that were laid that day. So we did and we had two broody chickens. We let Peeper sit on the leftover eggs from the rooster and then Betsy was still broody so we ordered 10 eggs from eBay and Betsy sat on those and they were so like fastidious they, they just sat there the whole time for the three weeks we'd have to take them off and put them to water and to eat and then they would run their fat butts back to the coop really quickly so we had three chicks hatch from what was left over from the rooster they were peepers and we had four hatch under Betsy that were from eBay out of those four two survived two um, had disgusting intestinal problems that we fixed with super glue for a couple of days and then <laughs> Ed did some super glue surgery disgusting the intestines were like outside of the body it was rank um, so he super glued them and then they were actually okay for a couple of days but then uh, Betsy who was the mother of those ones it was like survival of the fittest she tried to kill them off it was, it was awful so I was in there with the chicken, giving it like heart palpitation, <laughs> compression, like blowing, giving it gator aid, like the works. And it still lived for a couple of days, but then it, it just did not recover. And then the other one died. So she then had two left and Peeper had three. And then I had a little chick sitting at Tractor Supplies that came home with three more. Betsy killed one of them. And then that's when Betsy lost her parenting privileges. So Chick Protective Services stepped in separated her so and then she still wanted to be with her chickies the two that were left so we kind of let her see them during the day and split them again but she was just a bit of a psycho so then she's completely separated so and now they don't even interact so she kind of pined for them for a few days and then oh, that was it they're all with peeper so peeper is the mum of all the chicks now and what kind of chicken is peeper? peeper's the little silky 
So all the chicks will actually probably be bigger than her. They're almost bigger than her now. I guess I want to just ask about the pandemic. I mean, like, what was it like for you and your family? Uh, we were very lucky, honestly, because we had enough space. You know, the, we had things to do. We could play outside and Ed's business was fine because people were sitting at home looking at their blank walls and he's an artist and they were like, well, we need a painting for that wall. So he was okay. Um, I mean, it was difficult because we were worried about our families overseas and we've been, who knows when we'll see them again and they couldn't come to us. Um, so all those kind of things were difficult, but I really can't complain. Yeah. What was it like for the kids being home from, I mean, they were home from school all day? That, that was that? rough. <laughs> they were home for a really long time. Like, I, they, again, as, you know, you hate to complain when you've got like all these great things going, but it was a long time because it was me, it was me, right? Because Ed works on his own at the studio, really. So he he was okay. He could work alone, so he could go. So it was me doing the homeschooling for months, and then doing the trying to figure out the online element of that, which was tricky, right? Because the schools had never done it before. All these teachers are suddenly having to be these technical wizards with the zoom and this and that and they've never used them so there was a lot of forgotten passwords there was a lot of not being able to log in there was a lot of cameras turning off there was a lot of like just genuine boredom from Rafe I remember like on the first day where they did get the zoom things going he wasn't trying to be rude but I just saw his message to the teachers just him being completely honest saying this is getting really boring like could you make it a bit more interesting <laughs> It was just him being a nine-year-old honest boy because it was really boring so but i'd look in there and he'd have a chicken he'd have a dog he'd be under the bed over the bed so i couldn't blame them i mean it was you know it's just so different just so boring honestly but that was better than them having a stack of papers to do which was the initial thing our nine-year-old is a social butterfly we talked the other day about what an extrovert and an introvert were and he said, I'm an extrovert. I was like, I know, I know you are an extrovert. He's like, cause I like talking to people. And I, the more talking you have, the more fun you have, the more conversations you have, and the more fun it is. I was like, yes. So he is that kid. He wants to be around people. He's energized by being around people. Um, so for him to not see friends for months and months and months was rough. Um, and he would just cry about that. Like, you just miss my friends, I miss my friends. For my daughter, she was a lot more comfortable with the online element. She was kind of happy to be in her PJs all day. Um, you know, just kind of hanging out with some snacks and a dog and a chicken and uh, having her music on in the side and, you know, having side conversations with the kids who were meant to be listening to the teacher, but who were a bit bored. So she was fine with that. I mean, she did miss her friends, but then again, there's the middle school girl element was at play as well. So it wasn't so bad to be out of school for a while, um, but she was glad to be back. I think the chickens were a good addition because they were very calming. Like it's very calming to just sit and watch these little chickies learn about how to be a chicken. I think Easter is my favorite just because she's so she's got the big fluffy cheeks and the way she's just like she'll see me and just like run with like her whole body looks like it's going to fall any minute because she puts all her body weight at the front and she'll like run and then the others will come with her and she's got a cross beak so she's my special needs chicken her beak instead of going like that goes like that so I have to like feed her differently. I'll put a bunch of food in here so she can put her beak in and then whatever falls down, I still hold and she's got a better chance of getting some in her mouth. And then um, I have to trim her beak now and then, which I hate doing and then with a nail clipper. And if you get it too close to the quick, it's like a dog's nail. It bleeds for the longest time. It's rank, it's disgusting. And then you have to file it with a nail file. She's not skinny, so she's, she's making it work. But like when I'm giving them the treats, I kind of help her. He built the run, yep. He built the run, and did you have to convince him, or did he do it really? No, he, um, he is pretty handy. So uh, he got to it, ordered the wood, and I ordered the coop. I uh, did not want one that was hard to clean, so we could have gotten like a nice farmhouse one, but it was gonna be too, I, I just wanted to be able to clean it well, easily. Um, Cause I got, you know, the um, nourishing part of 
parenthood and animal logistics, but the whole, the whole cleaning up part, the housewifey part, I'm not so good at. So <laughs> I didn't want it to be hard to clean or, you know, the wood to absorb smells or any of that. So it's really easy to clean. So it doesn't look as cute, the coop doesn't, but I, I like it. But of all the gifts out there, why chickens? Because we can go to Thailand. That was like my dream. To, it has been for a long time. So he wrote me a, an, Ed wrote me an IOU as a trip to Thailand and gave me a guidebook <laughs> to Thailand. So I don't know when we're ever going to get there. But um, yeah, I'm not a big one for big birthday parties for myself anyway. For his birthday, we had a big 40th birthday party. So I probably, I don't know if I would have had a big party, but I mean, we love to have people over. So, you know, at four o'clock that day, we did invite, a few, he finally made me relent and we invited like a few people over, but that was it for like a socially distant hello. That was really it. Would you recommend uh, chickens to other women having their 40th birthday? Why not? Yeah, yeah. I mean, they don't take a lot of upkeep. You can actually know very little about chickens and they will survive <laughs> and give you eggs and be fun. Um, so yeah, they're a fun thing. They're, they're fun to have around. Um, and our family have enjoyed them. The dogs are fine with them. The dogs actually kind of look after them. Like little bit, if the little chickies get too far away from Peeper, he'll be like hovering nervously, like you should probably be with your mama. Um, so they've just been like a nice comedy addition. I want to hear about Nikki's birthday. Uh-huh. Kind of made the best of it for her birthday. Yeah, well, she researched every different type of chicken coop you can imagine and she had this one coming from England but it was going to take like six weeks and so I thought well you know in the meantime we can look at like buying one but every everyone you look at wasn't quite the right size and you know you want it kind of special looking and I thought it'd be cool to make it match and blend in with the house and just be something really special that I'd helped done and contributed to um, and so we started like designing different ideas and looking at different um, sort of colors and styles and how it would connect. And, and so I went, we went and looked at some too, but it was, it was going to be really complicated to like create a flat pad for the chickens. So, but anyway, I thought it'd be fun to make something really, really special for a birthday. You know, something, something that you couldn't just, she, I couldn't just buy for her. Something that was, in, and, and, and of course she looked at every little part of it while we were building it to make sure nothing could tunnel underneath it. We put wire all the way underneath it and block all over the top. Once I built it, I realized that the funnest part about chickens is watching the chickens, all right? You can have the chicken run they will hang out in, but you want to sit down, have your coffee, and look at what they're, all the chickens are doing. So I ended up building this sort of cool little viewing deck on the side of the chicken coop that she could sort of sit down and look at them in. So that was sort of like the additional pier, chicken pier. I'll, pr I'll probably have to build another little viewing area in the grass because she doesn't like that area. She can't see the chickens enough. So we've, we've, we'll probably have to build that out a bit more. But it's fun, you know, it was, it was nice. I think, um, you know, as you get older, it's like you can always buy different stuff for your spouse and there's always things you can buy. But it's the experience of making it and making it personalized. That's the fun way to, you know, be part of the process because I wasn't really part of the process. You know, I was like, yeah, I got the chickens, it's fine. And then re I re she realized that once that she started looking at it, I'm going to get involved in the design and the look and the aesthetic and, you know, so that was fun. It was really fun. She's always doing amazing things for me and it was just a good chance to like make something that was really meaningful to her, right? Really special because you know, you could, you could buy a chicken coop and have it delivered and installed, but it's just way more, um, you know, it's just a, a great way to connect and just sort of a fun part of our relationship. And, and it made it more special to me because I was engaged with it more and I could make it, I could put, put it where I wanted it to. <laughs> I think it really made it more special for her. Yeah, it did, it did, it yeah. did. Yeah, it totally made it more special. I used to give her paintings and she's like, look, sweetheart, you can't buy me any more paintings because it was like, I would do, I'd buy paintings that I kind of liked. And she was like, oh, that's a, kind of a, I don't want any more paintings. No more paintings. 
So now she's got the state-of-the-art chicken coop. I've learned a lot about chickens. I learned about eggs and how you can keep them out for a pretty long time. I like the little eggs, different sizes, different colors. One of the funniest things, I mean, you kind of, she started buying all these different things. Like, I've had to do so many random things with these chickens too. The first thing, I, I, I noticed her getting really serious about chickens was when we had like some fake eggs arrive. And I said, what are these fake eggs for? And she said, well, they're actually not for, they're, they're encouragement eggs. And I said, well, what do you do with those? She said, well, you go and put them in the, in the coop. And it worked. And they started laying more eggs from the encouragement eggs. That was the first random thing. The second random thing was when I had to like super glue a chicken's butt back together. Um, and the third was a chicken diaper. We got chicken diapers for the house when they come in the house when they get injured. We had this nasty piece of work rooster. The first one we lost. Um, well, he's eaten by a hawk. The second one, Nikki got from another owner. And I guess what I've learned is that unless you raise the rooster and you're around it, it can be like, I mean, it's, it's like an attack rooster. And it came at me like a missile. And it used to chase Rafe across the yard. But then it, I mean, I still got like a, a dent in one of my legs, in, in a leg here from one of those roosters um, taking a peck out of my leg. So anyway, the landscape lady came around. And she, was, she was like fixing the yard. And Nikki was away for the weekend. And I said, sweetheart, I think we're going to have to get rid of that rooster. She didn't like it. And she had, it actually, she didn't like going down there to hang out with the chickens because the rooster was really nasty and it changed the whole experience. And I said, well, I'm a fixer and I can make this go away for you. So I called in a hit with my landscaper and she came and took the rooster and the rooster is no more. The rooster is now in a chicken soup. But midway through the experience, Nikki had like total like buyer's remorse on the whole situation. And she wasn't sure she wanted to retract the hit. And I said to her, sweetheart, just like in the movies, you know, like in the Sopranos, you can't retract a hit. When the hit goes down, that's it. You can't call it off. So chicken is no more. We have new roosters and they're nice roosters. Now we actually have things to scare off the hawks. We've got, we've got like, we took all the Halloween gear out. We've got like a Frankenstein out there. Do you really? Yeah, we've got Frank. Frank is dressed in a snowboarding outfit with a mask. And <laughs> <laughs> people are terrified when they go on the drive. And for a while, for weeks, every time I walked outside, I'd look and I'd think, oh, it's, it's a person, it's a person. But there's a couple of people out there. Well, when I was a college student, I was studying fine art in London. And I spent my summer sun in books door to door with a publishing company in Nashville. And I did that for a couple of years and then I actually recruited Nikki to come and do it as well. So she came and did it. And then I moved here to work with them for a couple of years building a fine art business. So that company was in Nashville. So I moved here. And they're a publishing company, one of Nashville's oldest publishing companies, coming from Southwest and Great American. And they recruit thousands of college students every summer to run their own business selling books door to door. And that's, that's what I did. And then Nikki did it. And then I said, well, I'm gonna go back to Scotland and do it. And then I met the owner of the company. He said, well, no, maybe you should come here and do it. And so I called Nikki and said, actually, we're not coming back to Edinburgh. I'm gonna move to Nashville. And my plan was to probably move back, but we ended up staying. You know, Nashville just exploded over, that, over those few years too. I was selling um, late 19th century, early 20th century secondary market paintings, museum quality paintings. And, but then I, I really wanted to, to start painting again myself and so I started painting again and that just kind of really took off, it was really organic and yeah, so it's kind of it's where we are now. I'm really interested in a, an aesthetic called Wabi Sabi, which is a Japanese aesthetic. I was probably really interested in that before I even knew knew them there was a word that that encompassed that aesthetic and wabi sabi is um, an aesthetic that really deals with finding uh, beauty through the imperfection and then um, beauty through the decay and beauty through the asymmetry um, rather than you know western aesthetic that's really focused on clean lines clean surfaces order symmetry 
I'm trying to find something that is, um, you know, organic, um, you know, in a world which is really influenced by the disposable and the new. Um, how do we find? How do we? How do we sort of incorporate something that is old and old but but weathered? You know, and so a lot of my work is is based around that. Whether it's a terrain painting, whether it's an abstract painting, whether it's a landscape painting, I'm trying to create something that's very real and textured throughout all those all the, all those pieces of work. And that's kind of you know it's representative of us and the world. You know, we're all part partly broken. There's you know there's different layers to all of us, right? There's our surface layer and our deep layers and. Sometimes it's the, 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 the deep down layers which, you know, are moving and influencing the most of most of the world. You know. How is art like animals? I don't know. I guess they each have their own personality. They've got their own. Each got their own, their own character. They've got their own pat. You know, it's funny when you look at a chicken and you look up close. Some of the feathers are just beautiful. You know, you like it's just this. Just a, like a, a beautiful gradation of color to the chickens. That's pretty, you know. And you've got the very beautiful feathers, and you've got these really gnarly little feet, you know. They're all kind of textured and grungy, and you know. And then they, and you've got these little packs that are going around. But I don't know. It's a hard leap. Years ago, I went to go hang out with my mom at her house. Um, we were just sitting out by the pool, having some wine. And this is suburban South Carolina, you know, so we're in a neighborhood, classic neighborhood setting, nothing special there. Um, but it starts to get late, and so I tell her, you know, Mom, I'm gonna head out, I'm gonna go hang out with my boyfriend, um, see you later. So I'm walking down the hill, out the gate, and into the driveway, and in front of me, there are biddies everywhere. and. This was not when chickens in neighborhoods were commonplace. I mean, and they're coming out of the woodwork. I mean, they're like getting bugs from my neighbor's plants. They're running through the front yard, down the driveway. And I just have this instinct come over me like, I've got to catch these chickens. And so I'm in a jean dress and wedges and running through the yard and scooping up biddies here and trying to grab them from here. And all the while just screaming like, mom, mom, I, I need you, I need help now. So she tears from the backyard and sees me and is completely bewildered because I'm standing here with two biddies in one hand and three in the other and they're flapping wildly and I'm like, I need help, go get my brother and have him bring a kennel or something. So my brother comes around the corner with the old travel dog kennel and between the three of us we're like wrestling these chickens to like get their wings down and get them in the kennel safely and so the chickens all finally get in there and then we're all just stuck with the question like, okay, now what do we do with these five chickens? So it just so happened that a few months prior, my future mother-in-law had made the statement, you know, one day I really wanna just have chickens. I wanna homestead, have some chickens of my own. I think it would just be great. And so that's the answer. I'm like, okay, Lisa's getting her chickens. So we load the crate full of chickens into my car and I call my future husband, then boyfriend, and say, Hey babe, I'm on the way out to see you. Um, also, just so you know, I have a car full of chickens, so let your mom know because I'm bringing them to her today. The farmhouse project started off when we bought this historic home. Um, we were city people um, living a very hectic life in Manhattan and um, we bought this historic home and we are renovating it room by room and the farmhouse project kind of evolved into a social media presence of documenting the restoration and then it evolved into doing recipes and cocktails and living a simple life. Then it also evolved into an online um, home collection. I have a background in product design, so we sell locally made goods. 
and then we also host events to bring attention to Sullivan County and bring people up to see the beauty of the Western Catskills. We got chickens probably three years ago. Um, we started off with about um, a dozen. And I vehemently did not want chickens. My, my undergraduate degree is in agronomy. They're dirty, uh, they're work, um, and I just, I did not want them. And I ignored him and bought them. And they just came. <laughs> and he's in love with them. <laughs> oh, absolutely. We added six more into our chicken family. Um, right around the pandemic, um, we ordered them early spring and they came in in June. And, um, you know, with everything going on at the pen with the pandemic, um, we love staying home and focusing on the garden. So adding new chicks to our family was really wonderful. And, you know, of course, caring for them inside until they're ready to be um, joined with the other girls. But it was a really great way to keep us busy and motivated and focusing on the garden and outside and enjoying the chickens. And it's just, you know, it's a little life that you're taking care of. So, you know, everything on the news with, you know, politics and the, the virus is just so gloomy and you have these little creatures that are just sources of joy around you and it just helped balance everything when everything was so stressful and, um, you know, we had a, a group of, of girls that were already doing well and we knew we could introduce new ones to them without problem. I you am a, ordered them. I ordered them, surprisingly, you know, the person that didn't want chicks originally. <laughs> um, I had a feeling things would be bad. You know, my background's in medicine and uh, just kind of the state of the country at the time. I, I knew we were in for the long haul. So, um, you know, it wasn't it wasn't kind of a prepper kind of thing, but I knew we just have, would have the time and we would probably need kind of the, um, I don't know, they're like a source of therapy too. So I think we just, it was it was time to get some more some more girls and i think we ordered them at the right time because obviously shortly after that there was a shortage of chickens livestock yeah. gardening supplies um tools so it was perfect timing they have their own unique personalities which i find that so interesting growing up with dogs most of my whole life and not um, on a farm. Um, but, you know, they have their own little zesty yeah. personalities and some are more shy than others and some are Love super bugs, outgoing. Yeah. And, you know, they are all different breeds and they all get along wonderfully, which is something nice to see and have around. Yeah, it's like when the kind of the world seems like it's falling apart, you have these birds that are just their own little community, their kind of sisterhood, they protect each other, they look after each other, and it just, I don't know, it kind of in a way gives you hope, you know, and uh, to see this community that is functioning and uh, taking care of themselves. It's, you know, you know, some people might say they're just chickens, but, you know, they're their they're little society and it, it, you know, it just makes us happy. Yeah. Having the chickens has definitely brought us closer together through some shared experience, not just you know, taking care of them, but you know, we've had a chicken that needed foot surgery and Sean is a squeamish person and <laughs> you know, I have a medical background. So you know, we, we brought a bird into the kitchen and performed a surgery on her foot and mm -hmm. you know, he, pulled it together and, you know, calmed her and sat through the whole thing. And, you know, experiences like that, you know, you just don't get from watching movies or TV together as a couple. Yeah, and I also think um, the coop that we have um, has been here even before we bought the house. I don't think it's as old as our house, but it is quite old. And when we decided, or when I decided I was gonna get chickens initially three years ago, we fixed up the coop and we built a run and we had Chris's family here to help us. So, you know, like this house has given to us, it has brought us together of, you know, learning new things and caring for animals um, and, you know, just working together in the yard and making sure they're okay and feeding them. I think it's also brought the community together. I mean, it sounds silly, but, you know, we're the, the guys with the eggs. And when people weren't feeling safe to go out to the store, or maybe they really limited the 
the opportunities to go shopping. You know, we could leave a carton of eggs on our porch, people could grab them, or we could trade, you know, like the old fashioned cup of sugar. And, you know, I think we became closer to some of the people that came into our little community. That's kind of been an interesting benefit of, you know, bridging some gaps between, you know, you, rural communities tend to be close, but you're also rural and you're far apart from each other physically. So this has been a kind of a nice little way for us to uh, share share with our neighbors and develop friendships when you know we can't even be in the same room together. Mm -hmm. People walk by and see the chickens running around. So it's, uh, you know, we even see little kids with their mom, they're counting the chickens. And so we've, you know, some old timers that lived here 50 years ago, they remember when there were chickens on this property. So you just develop these friendships and because of, you know, safety, we just kind of make arrangements to kind of swap um, you know, someone had, was growing flowers, they'll leave a mason jar of flowers and they take some eggs and, you know, and like, it's just the two of us and we, you know, we have up to 12 hens, so we have more than we could do with. Um, so, you know, something, just give them to people that, you know, would like them or they're baking or, you know, you know, they're cooking a special breakfast. So it has been a, a great way to kind of, you know, form friendships or build on friendships. We're staying home now more than ever. And, you know, to live in a space that you truly love and believe in um, makes so much sense now. And, you know, seeing people on Instagram and online and reaching out to the Farmhouse Project um, and sharing stories about what they've done to their house and everyone is stuck being home. And, you know, why not make it a little more beautiful? Having chickens, they're also beautiful and unique and, you know, seeing them kind of just grazing around the property and, you know, with our old vintage truck, you know, it's like truly, a, you know, this uh, little slice of country living. But they're also grounding, you know, like I said earlier, chickens are gross. I mean, yes. <laughs> and it, you know, they're, they're these beautiful feathery things, but you know, they have disgusting feet, they poop everywhere. And so it does give you kind of you know, I think we are focused on design, but I think we're now kind of more conscious of what is practical, um, what is what is livable, mm -hmm. and um, you know, so we can have these birds that you know produce beautiful food, but you know, there is responsibility, um, mm -hmm. you know, responsibility for for their lives and for their health. I think it helped guide kind of what we do as far as products are concerned because it is. It is sustainable because it has to be. Mm -hmm. um, it is focused on the home because that's where we're spending all of our time. Yeah, and I think, you know, creating this beautiful life at home with interiors is great, but as Chris mentioned, you know, bringing chickens into your property and gardening, that's also creating a beautiful home. You know, it's not just about interiors. Um, it's also um, for us to think more consciously of the environment and, you know, using less plastic and, um, you know, thinking a little more that um, is a way to live a better life, but also um, to treat our earth you know, very carefully and, you know, so we have it for a long time. Even before the pandemic, there's been a shift of this simple living and people feeling nostalgic of the past and the whole craft movement over the past 10 years has really taken off where a younger generation, younger than us even, are really finding passion in painting and crafting and welding and doing all of these um, crafts that quite frankly have become a lost art and it's really inspiring to see this movement of younger folks that are you know doing these crafts that their parents or grandparents did and making a living off of it and also you know being curious about you know upstate living and escaping to the country and you know where 10, 20 years ago, that wasn't so cool because everyone wants to be in the city and shop in the city and live this great hustle and bustle life where I think a lot of us now are rethinking the way we live and trying to go back to what things were and how simple they are. We intentionally 
got just a motley crew of chickens. So we could easily recognize them. And you know, you get these catalogs, you can look online, and they all have their different attributes. And so we're, we are not in the business of selling eggs, so the, their production or their sizes or uniformity is not important to us. So we wanted to have some hens that lay beautiful eggs was that is a bonus. the top of my list. <laughs> that is a bonus. You know, we, we wanted birds that would survive our rough Sullivan County winters and um, that would be friendly so they would get along with each other and with us. And I think when we were naming them, originally we were thinking of strong women. Strong women. So, you know, we have uh, Thelma and Louise, we have Diane, Diane Keaton. Tilda. Tilda, Tilda Swinton. Swinton. Latrice, who is a, a drag queen, Latrice Royale. <laughs> um, you know, Lucy, that's my sister-in-law. Um, you know, and then, you know, some of the newer ones just are kind of how they look. You know, Sunshine is golden. Eagle looks like an eagle. Dawn is gray, like the, you know, the morning. And then there's Velcro, who since day one, she just stick to you. Like, she's like a little puppy. So, you know, Velcro is an obvious that. name. She still is like that. Um, and then Pigeon, this tiny little white one that doesn't even look like a chicken. She's not very pretty. <laughs> she's, she's not, she's kind of unfortunate looking. You know, naming them is fun too because it's, it's, uh, people, you know, people stopped thinking of them as just livestock or, you know, or just something to butcher and eat. So, you know, gives them more life, more personality, and people appreciate them as, you know, sentient beings. And a lot of them will come when we call them. Yeah, names. a few of them know their names. Oh, really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's fabulous. Yeah. Okay, what is your fish? I mean, which one is your, the one that's like lovely? That's, that's Velcro. So she'll, you know, you, and she'll, she'll come. You know, even if there's food out, she'll come to you. She will, you know, want to be held. And she wants not, to walk inside. She wants to walk inside the house. You know, she'll just fall asleep. You know, when you're petting her. Um, yeah, she's she's wild. But then she'll run off with the other ones and be a great huntress. You know, like the others. My favorite is Lucy, who's the little one. She's a little bantam, and she looks like she has this leopard print all over her feathers, which is really fabulous. <laughs> um, but I love her because she's the little one, and <clears throat> she's very mighty. And very loud. Very loud and has some trouble catching up with the others and she'll just sit there and scream for us and we have to come and pick her up and move her to where the other ones are. So she's my favorite. And she's, she's, she's trained us, you know, we'll throw the treats out for them and she'll walk up to you wanting them Point hand the fed. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then she'll go and hunt too. But like, you know, she's definitely trained us to, uh, to spoil her. We're working from home and we take little breaks. And now that the weather is really beautiful for spring, we'll take little breaks and just kind of play with them outside. Or, you know, um, when they see us, they all run. Um, so, you know, that's, it's nice. And they'll chase us around the yard if we're doing yard work. Yeah, if we're doing gardening, like they always know, like I'll give them some cherry tomatoes. So they're like right at the garden fence waiting. And, uh, you know, they, they know, I think they know our routine better than we know theirs. Two of them like to jump on Chris's shoulder, yeah. which is really amusing, but sometimes he'll come in and I'll say, Chris, got there's poop on your bird shirt. poop on your back. Yeah, we call them like a poor man's uh, parrot because they just, <laughs> They just love to sit there and, you know, be close to me. You know, we'll be grilling out on the back and eating and uh, two or three of them just jump on the table and want to see what's going on yeah. and, you know, looking at our cocktail that we're drinking or the food we're eating and, you know, so they have these, their own little personalities. Um, so two of them like to follow Chris inside because they're very curious to see what's going on in the house. So. You know, there's we have a, a bunch of little yeah. Their 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 dynamics are very interesting. How they interact with each other, and you know, we don't, there's no true pecking order, but you know, we do have the kind of the queen hen. And in summer on hot days, we like to give them watermelon and we cut it up in different pieces. So they don't you know fight. And the queen shares her watermelon with nobody except <laughs> our tiny little Lucy. And Lucy can get away with anything. You know, the other birds, no one picks on her. She's the only one that's allowed to share food with the queen. And you know, just funny observations just to watch them do things like that. We, uh, they ganged up on a squirrel and killed it. I mean, I don't know if that's funny, but you know, <laughs> I never thought they like attacked as a pack like lionesses or something, but that was <laughs> definitely interesting. You know, I like that they're, 
there's a bit of wildness in them. You know, I would never want to dress them up. I would never want them in the house. I like that they're wild and, you know, killing mice and, you know, just Sounds. spending all day hunting. And, you know, it's, it's, it's this kind of fine line between a domestic animal and a wild animal that is just fascinating to watch outside.